Hello everyone, this is Peak Hour Entertainment, we're back again and today we're going to be re reviewing The Witcher which is a Netflix adaptation of a fantasy book series by Andre Sapowski and it's based on the adventures of um, Geralt who is a monster bounty hunter and he goes around um, hunting various beasts and scorpions and mutants and dragons etc all for money and it's set within a medieval sort of setting and it stars Henry Cavill um, in the lead role as Geralt. It also stars um, Anya Chatura as Jennifer and Freya Allen as Ciri as well. Um, those are the sort of three primary characters and the story revolves around essentially Geralt going around on these standalone adventures and we see him over the course of the series build up various relationships and um, sort of meet adversaries and enemies over the time and eventually he embarks on his um, destiny which is to become a protector for Ciri who herself has these special abilities, these special powers which wants to be obtained by various kingdoms and we see her go on her own journey and how she copes with having the various struggles of having to be constantly on the run and having to escape from various people trying to hunt her down. Um, so as the story develops, characters journey sort of intertwine and intersect and cross over one another. And that's basically, um, without going into too much of a spoiler, spoiler for the whole series. Now for me, I felt this series was really good. You know, it was really impressive really immerse itself in its fantasy setting um, for a Netflix production, which is still going to be very high, still going to have a very high budget, but obviously not on the same standard as what you would get on a HBO production. And the obvious comparison is going to be with Game of Thrones, which had a cinematic budget, basically um, a television series that you could have easily spent, you know, we had movies that were spent less on what you were spending on Game of Thrones. And The Witcher is going to get that instant comparison um, to Game of Thrones. But The Witcher itself is a much more of a dynamic, energetic fantasy series. It really delves more into the supernatural elements. So you'll see a lot of characters um, wielding energy waves and energy forces and manipulating the land and the air and the ground. You'll see a lot more sort of portals going into different realms and different sort of environments. Not too dissimilar to what we saw in um, Doctor Strange um, from the MCU. That sort of um, high level of fantasy, high concept. That's more The Witcher. Whereas I think when you look at Game of Thrones, that was much more of a grounded take. That was more about the politics and the backstabbing and the, the sort of behind the scenes between each characters. We don't really get out a lot of The Witcher. The Witcher is a lot more of the characters being out there, doing things, sort of being more proactive. Um, and we, we we still get a lot of large scale battles and sieges on castles. We get landscapes and environments and it's very much um, immersive in what it wants to be as a fantasy series. And it it does this really well. It takes its story really seriously and we get a huge collection of characters. It primarily concentrates on the, the, the three that I mentioned at the beginning, but we have various kings and monarchs and sorcerers who over time intertwine with the story itself. So the, the other consideration with this series is that it is very R-rated, so you're gonna get a lot of nudity, a lot of sex scenes, a lot of violence in that Game of Thrones style. So. If you're just to be aware going into this series, it doesn't hold back on it at all. There are, you know, really strong fantasy series, which is what you want. You want, if you're going to have a sort of fantasy genre, you want it to go all out, right? You don't want it to hold back and try and be restrained. And it's very difficult to do a fantasy series because you're dealing with locations and big castles and big structures and different monsters. So you have to really go all out, right? It's not, this isn't a comedy, a sitcom, or a police drama, a police procedural. You know, you, you have to really sort of take things head on and dive into the source material as such. And The Witcher does that a lot. You know, it takes itself very seriously. Now, 
I know there, as well as the book series, there was a series of computer games on The Witcher. Um, again, that in itself, from what I've seen from various clips and screenshots, was again a very vivid fantasy series. So, as fans of the games, um, I'm not sure how faithful or unfaithful this is. From the screenshots, I can see that some of the ethnicities of certain characters have been changed. Um, from the book's perspective, again, I don't know how strong or how committed they are to the books. So to move on to the performances, now, three are great. Um, Henry Cavill as Gerard in the lead is very strong. Physically, completely looks the part. You know, he's got the face structure. He's got the physical builds. If you go on YouTube, you can see how Henry Cavill talked about the physical sort of preparation um, the workouts that he had to endure to get ready for this role. And he's had that previously of other film roles. Um, he's always been someone who's had to rigidly stay in shape. And it shows in here as well. And at the beginning episodes, he has this really sort of deep, booming, sort of brooding accent. And it takes a while to get used to. But once he does, and as the episodes roll on, he exhibits more of a charisma and a personality. And he's done really well. Um, sort of as the anchor character, the lead character in this role. We then have Anya Chitora as Jennifer. And for me, this was the standout performance of the series. As Jennifer, this is a character that has the most progressive and overall arc. When we first meet her, she's very sort of frail and weak and really sort of unsure of herself without giving too much of a what um, away um, of who she is and her role and as the stand story goes um, throughout the series we see her coming to her own and she develops more abilities and she becomes a force to be reckoned with by the end of the series uh, particularly seven, episode seven and eight we will see her really at the forefront and at times she can become the dominant character of the series when we go over to Siri and as I mentioned before, she has her own standalone storyline, which is really on a separate tangent from what goes on with the other characters. She's on her own for most of the um, season, and it's only with the latter episodes that she comes in and, and we see how she connects with the other characters in the role. So all three lead performances, all really great. Um, all actors give their full commitment. The supporting characters, they did fine as well. Um, some were more standout than others, um, but in general, they all did fine in their roles. Some was There was no bad performance here. The, the most that stood out was um, the characters was Tess Triss Merigold, who is basically another sorceress who comes to connect with Geralt, I think, in the fifth episode. And she, she has abilities and powers. And again, she becomes more prominent as this series moves on. We also have Jaskia who's basically a singing bard and he's like um, the character more companion to Gerard, and he provides more of the comic relief you know in a show that's very serious and sort of very dark and edgy um, in its tone the comic relief comes from him and he's basically following Gerard around and it's funny because Gerard half the time wants to get rid of him but he's always nagging at Gerard and keeping in touch with him and I think that was a nice touch you need you need that character around just to kind of just provide that light hardness if you like um it doesn't go too overboard he's never annoying but you just need those little moments of humor just to sort of just take you back a bit amongst all the sort of the more grittiness and the sort of dark tone that this series um presents on there the CGI was very good for a Netflix production there weren't too many scenes that I felt that looked out of place or didn't look as convincing all in all really good i think if you wanted to focus on anything that was bad it mainly was the narrative structure now for some reason i don't know why they decided to have these jumps in the narrative so you would have a sort of timeline okay when you get into the story, okay, this character is doing this, and this is the character doing this, and we're in this um, realm here, we're in this kingdom here. And then halfway, they jump. They jump back in time, and they really distort events. Now, normally, films or television series, there'll be a kind of title card, right, to say this is four months ago, three months ago, six years ago, just a way of keeping you as the viewer on track of what's going on. 
But The Witcher doesn't do that. It just expects you to run along with it. And the first time viewing, it can get very confusing as to what's going on. Like, why are we at this point of the storyline? We're with this character, but this character was this age four episodes ago. But we're they're at a younger age now. Why are we doing this? And it it does it doesn't add anything, you know. It sometimes filmmakers they jumble events to try and sort of be clever or you know try to keep the view on the edge of the seat. But it doesn't do that here. It there was no need to jumble the fence around and jumble the timelines around. And like I said, on first time viewing, you'll be confused. And this will be a show where you may have to go back and revisit it and watch two or three times and eventually you'll pay more attention and you'll see the flow of events and it does make sense when you pay attention to it again but I think at any show it should have that classic linear structure beginning middle end for some reason they decided to jumble events and for me it just didn't work um other issues the relationship between Gerard and Jennifer I wasn't quite convinced with. Again, I'm not trying to give too much away, but the closer they get together, they try to present them more as sort of kindred spirits. There's a close connection to the two. I didn't quite get that. I don't think it's a case of the actors' performances. I think it's just a case of the story didn't quite develop as well and the relationship between the two didn't quite feel as honest as what I thought the show wanted you to um, believe in. So that was a bit on the weaker side but again as we go into season two and three i think they, they've got opportunities to build up on that and there were certain episodes i think season two i mean episode two and episode five and six the story kind of drifted away um so you're kind of thinking where are we really going with this there's there's certain scenes of developments that could have been taken out and focused on other developments and um, that were a lot more stronger throughout the season um and would have made it just a bit more of a consistent flow and give it more the momentum that I think it required. But any that's only really the bad points I could really say. Um, great production, um, like I said, really good effects, really good CGI. And I think it's just very pleasing, you know, to have a fantasy series coming so soon after Game of Thrones. I know there was a negative aspect of the final season of Game of Thrones, but in general, Game of Thrones was that, top tier of fantasy television and previously we had Lord of the Rings and then we had Game of Thrones so I think Witcher can fill that void now of that really sort of high quality deep storytelling fully immersive fantasy series very mature very adult orientated series that mainstream people can enjoy you know and going into season two and season three I can only see it really getting stronger which will be good for all viewers alike. I'm pleased for Henry Cavill as well, that this is a role that, if we look at his previous outings recently, with Mission Impossible Fallout, and with Man of Uncle, which I felt was very underrated, and now with Witcher, I think this has proven that Henry Cavill is a very competent actor. And regardless of what you think about the DCU Superman and how it failed to connect with audiences, seeing Henry in this lead role now, has convinced me that it wasn't his fault you know it wasn't his fault that the dcu version of superman couldn't connect with audiences you know this is an actor who physically has you know has to look completely and if you give him the right material the right tone and the right sort of um spectrum within the role where he can expand himself he can deliver you a good lead performance so I'm happy for him and this this series from what I've read has been really popular. It's been alongside Stranger Things and The Mandalorian as amongst the most popular streaming series um, within the last year or two. So that's that bodes great going forward for season two, which has already been ordered and I'm pretty sure we'll get a season three and most likely a season four. So if I was to give an overall score, I would give The Witcher an 8.1 out of 10. Um, really strong, like I said, vivid, dynamic, energetic fantasy series, which is what you want. Um, few nitpicks here and there, but not enough to drag it down. And like I said, I've got a lot of um, excitement going forward for season two and season three. 
So that's my overview of The Richer. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Was it as good as Game of Thrones? Do you see it more as a knockoff of Game of Thrones? Do you see it's actually potentially better than Game of Thrones? And can it be that dominant fantasy series going forward for season two and season three? So let me know in the comments below and um, I'll see you very soon with lots of more reviews of shows and sports and general topics coming in the future. So take care for now.